play a wrong note is insignificant. To play without passion is inexcusable. So I feel that way about it, certainly. I, and you know, uh, I was telling you earlier, Kyle, about that I post videos on YouTube that show the the raw songwriting process. I don't mind the fans, uh, you know, hearing the little edgy things or a slight imperfection. You know, I'm good with it because it's honest. You know, I'm, I'm trying to be honest with the music. You know. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes, and I'm very, very privileged to have Mr. Earl Chaos and Fernando, and I'm, I hope I get your last name correct, Perdomo? Yep, you got it. All right, sweet. So they have uh, an album out called Shadows in a Jar, and the band is called Life on Mars, and it's a collaboration. And we've got some great uh, musicians on this album. And uh, we're going to talk about that and, and get to know these guys. And so, uh, Earl, let's start this off. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm from the Bronx, New York, and uh, I've written over 700 songs uh, at this point. And I stopped counting. Uh, I, you know, I, I tell people if, if you build houses and you've built 700 houses, you know, you probably know a bit about it at that point, you know, and I feel that with that many songs under my belt, uh, it, it helps me weed out, you know, certain things and just have uh, the better, the best stuff remaining, you know, and that's uh, the stuff that goes on the Life on Mars albums. So did I read this correctly? Y'all um, y'all worked on this for six years? Well, we've been, Fernando and I have been doing Life on Mars for eight years uh -huh. total, and we have, uh, five albums out and now this new one that you just mentioned shadows in a jar that's the sixth album and it's the first album we're doing for our record label mm -hmm. which is a uh, spirit of unicorn music and cherry red records in england so it's really exciting and uh we have big backing on it like you know you can get it through amazon walmart barnes and noble uh tower records japan and you know a hundred other places so um, it's really exciting for us, you know. And uh, yeah, from... we can't wait. We can't wait to have this music distributed right because, you know, it's 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 uh, it's never been a better time to be an independent artist. You know, mm -hmm. releasing music on your own, but having uh, partners like uh, you know, like Martin and, and Sam and everybody at the label, being able to push us and Billy James doing the publicity, you know, it really helps because, look, the way you look at it. You know, Earl and I have perfected making the music and uh, selling the music is a whole other art. And uh, we're hoping that the music gets a, a whole new set of ears because we've got um, a group of people that are just diehard Life on Mars fans and they're fantastic. But it'll be great to start getting fans all over the world because uh, eventually we would love to play shows and get out there and, you know, uh, and also it would be great to just, you know, meet new people that love the music because, it's timeless stuff, and I think people are going to really dig it. Yeah, I love that kind of throwback to the 60s and 70s sound that I get from it. But um, with all that, um, Fernando, you've got quite a bit of accomplishments to your name. Um, tell us a little bit about you. Well, I'm a singer-songwriter, producer, multi-instrumentalist, um, originally from Miami, Florida, which is actually where I am right now visiting my family. Uh, but I, um, I live in Los Angeles. I run a recording studio called Stairway Studios. My most famous thing is I was the guitar player for Jacob Dylan's uh, Echo in the Canyon project and movie, where I performed with uh, Brian Wilson, Beck, Fiona Apple, Jacob Dylan, uh, um, uh, Cat Power, um, Eric Clapton. It was a really incredible project. Wow. Uh, but um, I also am very well known in the progressive rock world, which is how I met Martin uh, Darville, who is the uh, guy who runs the label, who also happens to manage Yes. 
And uh, through them, I've put out a bunch of albums called Out to Sea 1 through 4. I've also worked with a guy named uh, Dave Kersner for years, uh, who uh, is very popular in the progressive rock world. And uh, through that, I, I recently performed with Yes at the uh, Alan White tribute. Uh, Steve Howe could not make it. And uh, me and a guitar player named Carl Haug, who used to play with uh, Alan White's band, we filled in with them and I got to play Roundabout with Yes and oh. four other songs, which was absolutely mind shattering. Um, Earl and I have awesome. been working now for eight years. Yeah, Earl and I have been working now for eight years. Uh, we met because we were both on the same uh, radio station and Earl heard a song of mine called Home is Wherever You Are and uh, contacted me because he loved the song and he loved the, uh, the production. And uh, um, eventually we struck up a friendship. I decided to cover one of his songs uh, called Hurricane Jane. He liked the way it came together so much that we ended up working it, working on it together, and that became the first Life on Mars song. And then uh, we just started working on uh, on music, and that became the first album called Far. Um, and uh, it, it's a good title because we do work far away from each other. He's on the East Coast, I'm on the left coast, but um, we send files to each other and we work on our things. And I love Earl's songs because you know he saw something in my songwriting that reminded him of, we have a lot of the same influences. We're both huge Beatles fans. We're both huge to the who and um, Bob Dylan and uh, all sorts of classic rock. And we work really well together because I think we speak the same language, which is important uh, to find musicians that you could work with that you could say, Hey, I want a Neil Young type guitar solo and you know what to do. And, you know, he's asked me to, you know, do stuff. And we, we always seem to, to see eye to eye. And unlike other clients, actually, um, that I work with, you know, other other producer, engineer, singer, songwriters, Earl actually is, he doesn't have the, the, the shame to ask for a different type of guitar solo. And he'll sometimes push me to do stuff that's a little bit out of my comfort zone. And it's a lot of fun because in the end, it sounds great. I mean, you know, it's really, really cool um, that he kind of pushes the envelope a little bit. And, uh, you know, we've put out... Uh, We've put out five records that are really, really diverse uh, with a lot of interesting guests. But the main um, pillars of the uh, the project are Earl and I. And uh, on this record that's coming out now, we were fortunate enough to work with Denny Sywell of Wings, who I made a record with uh, over the pandemic called uh, Ram On, the uh, 50th anniversary tribute to Paul and McCartney's Ram, uh, which was a credible project. And Denny and I are really good friends. And... Then he came in and played great drums on this record. Yeah, uh, Billy Sherwood of Yes, slash World Trade, slash Asia, who absolutely slayed on the first single called After All. Uh, beautiful vocals, beautiful drums, beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful bass. Uh, he's, 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 uh, he's spectacular. He's a good dude. And, uh, uh, you know, just like I, a multi-instrumentalist and, you know, we get along really well, and uh, we've recently played together with Yes, so there's that. But yeah, I mean, it's a it's a really cool project, and uh, I I love this this band, and I I can't wait to see what people think of it because, you know, when you when you work as an independent artist, sometimes you get tunnel vision with the same, you know, 150 people that are commenting on the stuff all the time. Yeah. I can't wait to see new faces and new fans and new fan mail and you know new reviews because. Hey, you know, we love it. I actually have this thing I've been telling my clients. It's like, make music for yourself, and if anybody else likes it, it's a side effect. Well, we love it, but uh, we're excited to see what other people think of it, you know? Kyle, one thing that your listeners might be interested in is, you know, as Fernando just said, uh, Life of Mars started out as me and Fernando, you know, and then we had an opportunity uh, on the first album, Far, to have... Uh, one of the backing vocalists for Pink Floyd join us. I think she did at least three world tours with uh, Pink Floyd and recorded albums with them and stuff. And her name is Durga McGroom. So we had her as a special guest. And as time went by, you know, your listeners, when they listen to Life on Mars, they're going to be hearing, you know, the backing vocalist for uh, Pink Floyd. We had uh, Scarlett Rivera, who, who was Bob Dylan's violin player and an absolutely unique and br brilliant talent. We had uh, Jamie Glazer, who plays lead guitar for the Jean-Luc Ponty band on with us. Um, we had Zach Nilsson, Harry's son, 
and so you know and, and other people like that you know so when you when your listeners uh, listen to life on mars albums they're going to be hearing world-class talent at all times and you know fernando i'll keep telling fernando he's better than his idols there's nobody out there that's better than Fernando on uh, guitar and most of the instruments he plays. And as an, a recording engineer, he's he's probably the hottest thing in America right now, I would say. So when, when people listen to Life on Mars, they're getting world-class talent and world-class recordings, you know? And when I listen to the album, it, it's as if no two songs were alike. You know, some bands, yeah. you get you know the songs would be of course different but they all kind of blend together kind of sound the, the same yes but, I, was, um, I was telling you before um all the life on mars albums have in common something with the beatles white album which mm -hmm. is the diversity of songs on the albums like i said they the beatles had blackbird on that album and they had held the skelter mm -hmm. all the life on mars albums are like that you know we've got the pretty ballads we've got pop We've got the hardest rock that really, you know, you're, you're going to hear too. Like, uh, I'll, I'll put our hard stuff up against anybody's. So I personally, um, you know, admire that stuff about other artists that they do have versatility in their songs. And so the Life on Mars album are purposely, you know, done that way to show that versatility. And, and, and I think it's interesting to the listeners and, it, and I love it myself. Yeah. You know, in Hurricane Jane, it's almost representative of everything that y'all do because it starts out kind of slow and then it gets to rocking. And, you know, you, you have your ballads on there, but you've got some really good rocking stuff on there. Um, Fernando's guitar solo in, yeah. Hurricane, is, in Hurricane Jane is so, so supreme. You know, it's, it's just world class stuff, man. He's, he's a tremendous guitar player. Well, I know that that song, "The Key," that was a real rocking tune. That thing will rock your shoes off, <laughs> right? And and even um, like, was it uh, "Stray Dog"? And I had to write some notes down so I could That's remember okay. some of these songs. But "Stray Dog" uh, has a nice groove. Yeah, it's a, it's rocking, but it's a different type of rocking than than uh, the other stuff. Yeah, and then you got rock people, of course. And then yeah. you, you slow down with a song like Technology. Yeah, and we had uh, Rudy Celli on vocals and cello for that one. And she, well, you know, I hope she doesn't mind me saying she's my second favorite lead, uh, vocalist in the world because uh, I'm really fond of Emmy Lou Harris. Mm -hmm. but, then, but then it would be Rudy. She's just got a, like, a voice like an angel, you know? Yeah, and, her, ability, and our, her abilities on the cello are incredible as well. So we had her on there for technology, and it was great. Another well, great guitar one, solo by Fernando in that too. What I liked about uh, "Shadows in a Jar" is it's got that psychedelic sound to it, and you and you still rock it at the end, you know? Yeah, it, it is that way. Uh, Nancy's finger, that song, Nancy's finger, is a bit psychedelic and heavy too, you know. Oh, yeah, the, so the the intro on that. yeah, so the albums are all very versatile like that, you know, yeah. and world-class talents on them. Yeah. How did you get the name Chaos, by the way? Back in 2009, I was releasing my first solo album. It was called Disarray, and mm -hmm. I knew we were getting radio play in advance. Uh, and people can't pronounce my given name. Mm -hmm. It only has five letters, but they pronounce it like 16 different ways, you know, and you can't have that if you're trying to get, um, you know, recognized there out there in the public. So I figured I would just uh, invent something that, that would be e easy for people to say or all chaos, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, the only thing that I can kind of liken the, the sound to is almost as if uh, David Bowie and Bob Dylan had a had a musical child. <laughs> wow. that's an honor yes yeah, so i hear stuff like that uh throughout the years without a doubt we did take the um band name from a david bowie song you know uh, his song mm -hmm. life of mars is tremendous mm -hmm. bowie is probably uh the artist i've seen the most live over the years you know all the concerts the, that i was able to attend when he was around you know i'm a tremendous fan of david's well i'm i'm hoping and the trend that i 
kind of see going on. And mind you, I, I live right next to a college town and the, I see the kids with the mullets and all that stuff. Now I'm like, God, I thought that went away with the nineties, but <laughs> Uh, they, they seem to kind of be gravitating to some of this older music and I, I'm hoping that it gets popular again. And that's what we hear. So, I mean, you, you listen to the stuff that's on now. It sounds so corporate and, and I, only way, bad, I don't know how to describe it. Things, a lot of bad things to say about that stuff, but it all boils down to the record companies. Actually, you know, yeah. you can't fault the record companies. They're in business to make money. Mm -hmm. And if people supported rock and roll, the record companies would be all over it, you know? So that's really uh, the simplicity of it all. Rock and roll is still going strong. It's not dead. And, and some, some tremendous music is coming out, you know, Life of Mars, I hope we're part of that, but, uh, the people that say that they're rock and rollers and the people that say they love rock, you know, that they've got to support it and then it'll be back. I saw bell bottoms three days ago. So there's a good <laughs> Well, I mean, in prog rock, of course, you've got all kinds of different sounds going on and, but it was, it was artistic. Now everything computerized is just, you, they take some music from another band. They throw another beat on top of it. And then they throw a rhyme on top of it, and that's what they call music. And it just it doesn't. The listeners that listen to that stuff, they don't even understand that they're listening to computers. You know, yeah. what I mean, there's no the soul. Vocal, yeah, the vocals are all uh, they're hearing computers. You know, all those voices are man manipulated by machines. But Life on Mars is a straight up rock and roll band. You know, you're gonna find some uh, edgy stuff in our recordings and stuff, and you know, we like it that way. It's rock and roll. I mean, I was that kid that was um, a ball about burning the disco records and stuff like that back in the day. Yeah, definitely. I remember that. And, but at the same time, there were some bands back then that they really had some great talent. They had great musicianship. The singing was great. It's just that the whole dance beat thing. And there are some talented kids out there. They, they sound wonderful and they, some of them even play their own instruments, but most of it, you, it's all programmed into a computer yep. and there's nothing that, that says, this is my soul. This is, this is me. It's just, it's coming from something else. Life well, on all the, Go ahead. For all me. the instruments you hear on life on Mars are real. We don't even really use synthesizers. I mean, it's, it's more, it's more of a guitar, real guitars, real bass always, real drums always, organ, piano, you know, it's, it's, there's only Not one song I could think of, there's only one song I could think of that used synthesizers and that it was cool. It worked really, really well, but really our, our whole goal is to create music that's timeless with no gimmicks. And the yeah, way that Earl moment. writes and sings, it's, it's beautiful, you know? Yeah, I, I love- Non-manipulated non vocals, you know, you're hearing what we really do. Now you have that that raw gutsy sound to you, and then when for, I, I'm assuming that's you singing on the other songs, right, Fernando? What? No, no it's mostly Earl. Oh, it's mostly Earl because uh, there was some tunes on there. It sounded different, like more. Uh, yeah, that's Billy Sherwood. Is oh, is that Billy Sherwood? Yeah, Billy Sherwood. Billy Sherwood's on After All. And then okay. I sang, I sang the rest of them except for Rudy sang uh, Technology. Yeah, Rudy sings technology, and the rest of it is Earl. And uh, Earl doesn't think so, but I, I, the the guy that I I compare Earl the most to is uh, man. I mean, like I love his voice because it's got so much gruff to it. But uh, I hear a lot of uh, Roger Chapman of uh, of family uh, in his voice, and that's a that's a singer that that influenced everybody from Peter Gabriel to Rod Stewart. You know, he was a very popular singer in England in the late 60s and early 70s and uh, there's an unhingedness to Earl's voice that I absolutely adore because <laughs> he, he could go from being he could go from being very warm to having like this like overdriven like you know rasp which is a lot of fun and you know that's like there's a lot of great singers out there right now but I feel like they're very one-dimensional you know um, uh, and it's really cool. In the, in the history of classic rock, every major classic rock singer, to me, always had, you know, a lot of variety. 
perfect example. Paul McCartney singing Blackbird and on the same album singing um, uh, freaking uh, Helter Skelter. Right. Um, you know, a perfect example. Roger, Roger, uh, uh, freaking. Uh, um, Roger Daltrey. Oh, Roger Daltrey, you know, on, on uh, Behind Blue Eyes, you know, mm -hmm. going from, you know, you don't know, know what it's like to just like screaming his ass off. You know, it's really cool because there's all these like there's all that yin yang, and I feel like that's something that you get out of out of um, out of Earl, which is uh, very old school, and very classic because nobody wants to hear somebody that sounds exactly the same on every song. Mm -hmm. And I can think about five artists that are in the top forty that I feel like that's all you get. You know, you get one one dimension, and uh, um, you know, I like the variety of Earl's voice and the variety of Earl's songwriting and his guitar playing. It's great. Well, see, you fooled me. I thought it was somebody else singing on some of those songs. You, your voice is so different, and it's very oh, isn't melodic. That the, isn't that the essence of chaos? <laughs> right. Yeah, you got I'm that confused. right. I'm confused about my voice as well, Kyle. So don't worry. About <laughs> no, man, I, 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 I love it. I love it. He, he always <laughs> delivers a, a very passionate performance, and you know, sometimes, sometimes it isn't perfect. But here's the deal. You know, I'll take passion. Actually, Earl has a quote that he likes to use. What was that quote from uh, from Beethoven? Uh, to play a wrong note is insignificant. To play without passion is inexcusable. So I feel that way true? about it, certainly. I, and you know, uh, I was telling you earlier, Kyle, about that I post videos on YouTube that show the, the raw songwriting process. I don't mind the fans, uh, you know, hearing the little edgy things or a slight imperfection. You know, I'm good with it because it's honest. You know, I'm, I'm trying to be honest with the music. You know, well, something makes it even more special when you you have those happy accidents, is what I call them. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what they are. But I mean, you you. Uh, you can tell that you put your heart into this there's uh such well you know, let's put it this way i i hear a song and then i hear it is like a, a real love song and then the next thing i hear is there's a heartache and yeah i think you mentioned in one of the songs that you know heartache is, is what i guess makes a good song passion makes a good song i, I i've been kind of doing this since I was five years old and there's this insane flame inside of me that you can't really describe but, but it, it it's an overwhelming passion that I have for the songs you know I consider them like my children and I and I treat them as such you know I'm very passionate about it and Fernando's abilities um on instruments and and, and engineering uh he knows how to capture that and 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 show it to the audience you know it's it, it it's an honor to be working with someone with his abilities to do that. So were you going through heartache when you wrote some of those songs? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of that stuff. I, I try to have songs that like people can relate to, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's important because music is a form of communication, you know? Yeah. And so yeah, there's a lot of different uh, em emotions and perspectives in the music and the songs that I think uh, the listeners can relate to, you know, that's my hope. You know, it's my hope to communicate with the listeners through, um, you know, the passion in the songs or whatever the topic is. When I listen to some bands, when their their first couple of albums come out, you can you can tell. I mean, they really put their all into it, and then when they they get some fame, and all of a sudden things become comfortable, then they they lose that passion. You know, in the beginning yeah. they're going through so much and they're I don't know. They're they're going through those hard times, and you, you, it comes out in the music. And when they're taking it easy, all that passion's gone. But yes, yeah, that's you, true. That's you, true. That's very noticeable in in uh, many people over the years. But uh, that ain't gonna happen with me. All right? <laughs> I'm always well, gonna be I'm always gonna be struggling, Kyle. So there'll always, <laughs> be, a lot of, there'll always be a lot of angst. Well, to tell you, you still put a lot of passion into your music and, and yeah. we need more of that. And if this is the direction that rock is taking, 
because you know billy will send me bands that i've not heard of before and i'll hear that that prog rock and his, or that 70s sound late 60s kind of sound it, they're they're all just awesome that's the only word i can put to it is awesome and i go man if this is the direction music's going in then i'm i'm, I'm gonna be happy again and i'm it, it's like hearing all those songs from the 70s all over again for the first time yeah it's good stuff hey uh Kyle, do you mind if I mention our Bandcamp page in case? Uh, sure, man. Go ahead. Your listeners want to check out our, our five previous albums. Uh, our new album, the first one for Spirit of Unicorn Music and Cherry Red Records, is coming out on November 18th. It's available everywhere. But if your uh, listeners want to check out our previous five albums, they can go to lifeonmarstheband.bandcamp.com and all five of our albums are listed there and, and they can check them out. We feel that we've matured and we're at our height right now. And the new album coming out on November 18th is, you know, definitely our best work. But there's great stuff on all the albums with world class musicians. Well, I listened to the new stuff and then I went back and, and listened to some of the older stuff. And I'm like, man, this, I'm glad to get these guys on because this stuff kicks butt. Thanks. Thank you. So, what are uh, are you working on the another album already? Yes, we're two band. songs into it. Wow, yeah. never stop yeah. working class the band. Album, the title of the next album is is uh, a well kept secret because we feel as we you know life on Mars is you know we're hoping that this uh, record uh, record deal with the Spirit of Unicorn gets us out there and uh, unnoticed a bit more than we have been, even though, you know, we've sold records around the world, but we're hoping that this is a next step in our, in a plateau of moving forward, the new albums, Shadows in a Jar, November 18th. So do you feel like constantly working like that keeps the flame going? You know, this thing with me with writing songs and why I've written over 700 of them, mm -hmm. um, it's like, it's almost weird or stupid, sounds stupid, but I don't really like try to write songs so it's like i know when i'm gonna write a song you know i always know when and, I, and i'll and i'll sit down and i'll write it but as far as you know having any pressure to to write songs or do anything like that it's not like that you know they come freely it's like your subconscious bubbles up you know yeah and so they come freely to me when when they want to and i'm and i'm aware of them and once once i have them you know i, I try to nurture them and do the best that i can for them and then present them to the public. But I, I don't have any pressure. You know, it's all easy with me. Well, I noticed some of the musicians on, on your albums that they've got some uh, credits to their name. And, uh, you know, what, what's it what's it like to work with these kind of people? They're all very nice. I can tell you that. Uh, Denny Sywell is a tremendous gentleman and a brilliant genius drummer. You know, he's the guy is fantastic. Uh, Billy Sherwood, nicest guy you could ever meet. Uh, indescribable talent, you know what I mean? Scarlett Rivera, they're, uh, they're all such nice people and brilliant artists, you know? It's an honor really to have them. Is it, is it incredible to work around talent like that and they, they don't bring an ego to the table? I haven't seen any of it, you know? It's just been no, To work in the industry, to be still working in the industry after sometimes four or five decades like Denny, you know, um, and, and, and Jamie and, you know, Durga, it's like, you know, you've got to have a certain uh, attitude and a certain ability to put your ego aside and put your talent first. And um, they're wonderful people. And the fact that they work with us is definitely a huge feather in our hats because, uh, look, you know, we're building our name they don't need to you know uh but uh you know to, for them to lend their talents to our music is a huge humbling experience for us because man who hasn't been a huge fan of mccartney you know right. who hasn't been a huge fan of dylan pink floyd john luke ponty you know these are these are legends man i mean it's it's pretty incredible and yes you know so the way i look at it is um to join forces with people that are in your record collection 
and uh, bring new life to their playing because, you know, look, that's the beautiful thing about interacting with these people is, you know, they're used to doing a certain thing. When they come in on our project, they take on a whole new level, you know, the way Denny plays on the sun on it is so cool. And Durga and, and Billy and, you know, Ruti and all these people, they're just like, it's fun to see, to collaborate, you know. That's kind of a lost art these days, is collaboration, you know, and it's great to collaborate with people that are not just, you know, friends, but also people that are in your record collection. And it's, yeah. it's awesome. It's something I'm kind of getting known for because I've been producing a lot of uh, tribute albums. And, you know, I also, uh, I was well known for producing older artists. I produced an artist named Linda Perhax, uh, her first album in 45 years after her first album. I worked with Emmett Rhodes. I worked with Dean Ford of the Marmalade. You know, and that's the thing is that, okay, it's Brown. multiple ages. Arthur Brown recently, you know, and these are older people. These are all in their late seventies. And, you know, it's like, sometimes it's really cool to see them play with a younger artist and get some of that youthful energy out, you know, right. great. And but they're all, they're all down to earth and wonderful. And, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to go and working with them. And it's very nice. And, it, and it's an honor, you know, it, it lends, uh, validity to life on Mars, you know, people with that type of reputation, uh, they're not about to just <laughs> to record with anybody, you know what I mean? Right, right. So to have them along and being such great people and huge talents, to me, is an indication of, you know, the validity of Life on Mars and what we do, you know? It's, it's, a, it's a good band. It's good songs and it's good musicianship. And yeah. sp speaking on uh, Ego, you have a song on the album called Ego. Can you tell yeah. me a little bit about that one? I love that song. <laughs> that's a that's a good rocker, you know. And basically, it, it's music related because uh, ego is like a, a big destroyer in rock and roll. You know what I mean? And we were just now discussing how these folks that we work with aren't that way. But ego, you could just rattle off the names of the great bands that it's destroying. Mm -hmm. You know. And yep. so, oh yeah. That's, so that song ego is really about. The music industry and I, I i started off the album with that song you know it's the opening track and i love it it's a good rocker and fernando's guitar on there you know i, I it's just absolutely fantastic you know it's, it's just great it's a, it's a good song yeah it is a shame you hear too many horror stories you get a band that gets real big and somebody in the band thinks that they're bigger than than the band so they'll split off and do their own thing and Sometimes it works, but a lot of times it doesn't, and they yeah, regret. There's a hundred bands that ego has destroyed, you know, but we're not that way, it, and it's wonderful. It's really, really nice, and I think that type of atmosphere allows for uh, the creativity and 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 the significance of the final product. You know, we work under great circumstances with great people and great great musicians. Well, ever since I even knew what music was. I, I fell in love with it, you know, of course, the classics, your Beatles, Rolling Stones, the Who, and so many others in between, and when I get to do a show like this, and then people like you come on, it's very humbling to me that, that you would spend your time on a little show like this. I, I, I can't tell you how much it means to me and how much I appreciate it. And, well, it's uh, a lot for me too, Kyle. You know, we're really looking forward to it, and it's it's been a lot of fun. Well, I I can't thank you enough, and any further projects that you have going on, I definitely would love to to be a part of promoting it. Hey, Kyle. Always... Oh, nice. <laughs> well, nice. You are the man. Thanks, man. I'm really excited about this record, and uh, you're the you're the first podcast that we're doing actually for this. So. This is the beginning of the promotional thing. So, you know, you could say you're the first guy to interview uh, Life on Mars for the Shadows in the Jar record. Well, yeah, I, that makes me feel even more humble to know something like that. I, 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 that is a privilege. It really is. And I, again, I can't thank you enough. Thank you, too, uh, Kyle. It's and thank great. you for your enthusiasm and thank you for your for your for your good research, too. Thanks for listening to the stuff and, you know definitely being you know present with us on it you know thanks well, yes much appreciated
appreciate it. Well, I wouldn't want to, to come on and not know anything about it at all. That would be embarrassing, number one. <laughs> and number two, it'd be a waste of your time if I didn't listen to Here, it. Here's the album cover the, for the new yeah. album. I, hey, um, I got to get where, one of those. The, well, yeah, we'll send you one. Where oh, in the world thanks. are you, Kyle? I'm just outside of Austin, Texas. Oh, nice. I've been I through Texas. Austin. Yeah, the music capital of Texas. I've been through Texas. It's a big state, as everybody oh, knows. Please. But when you drive completely across it, you get a much better understanding of how big it is. <laughs> that, that's yeah. for sure. That's for sure. But guys, I, um, I played stuff. I played stuff I stuck with many times, and uh, you know, I love it over there. It's really, really cool. I'm gonna tell you what. They've got some new venues, and I got to see the Who. Uh, that was. That was a dream. I'm going to see lifetime. them on Tuesday. Are I'm you? Gonna, I'm going to see them a week from tomorrow. I can't believe Roger Daltrey at his age can still hit those notes like he does. Well, the way I look at it is, you know, I I, I, I recently defended uh, Brian Wilson because, yes, you know, look, it's a, a Brian Wilson concert is a very strange thing because he just kind of sits there. Uh -huh. And, you know, the way I look at it is, look, while guys like Roger Daltrey and Pete Townsend are still breathing, you got to be there and enjoy whatever they have left, you know, and uh, when Roger really belts, it, there, there's no feeling, there's no, there's no feeling like going to a Who concert and him screaming in the middle of won't get fooled again, you know, you've got to experience that while you can, you know. Well, we have to see these guys before they're gone. And, of course. I mean, we're, uh, we're going on next was it next week to uh, see Stevie Nicks? Oh, um, she's great live. Um, I'm looking very forward to that. I'm still in love with her. <laughs> uh, I'm more of a Christine. I'm more of a Christine McVie guy, but uh, but I, I'm down. I'm down with Stevie. She's great. You no, know, in a way, these these artists that have created such significant music uh, over the years, they're never really completely gone. You know, because we we have their work. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's almost a little form of immortality in a way, you know. So I never feel like they're totally gone. And uh, a lot of a lot of great music out there that a lot of pe great people. Have, I like, tell that I tell that to my clients as well. I say, you know how they say leave a leave a, a pretty uh, leave a good looking body. I say leave a good looking discography because you know what, <laughs> Pablo Picasso sold one painting while he was alive. You know, we all dream of the possibility of like in 30 years 50 years 60 years after we're after earl and i are dead somebody finds a copy of shadows in a jar and says wow music used to be awesome you know <laughs> that's, that's gonna then, you know it's like that'll be awesome that'll be really that cool bad. man well the, the thing about music is when you got a great album a lot of times you know, guys like me who spent a lot of time alone when I was growing up and I'd be in my room kind of feeling down. I could put on an album and all of a sudden my mood changes completely. Next thing I know, I'm jumping around the room like I'm one of the rock stars on stage. And, you know, I got a broom pretending I can play guitar and it, it's there's a magic to it. It really changes you. Yeah, it's great stuff. It's a beautiful thing, brother. That it is. And if you guys make it this way, I, I need to know so I can come see you. I think oh, that man. we well, have songs that will, uh, and recordings that will stand the test of time. You know, I, I'm very confident in, in, in the work that we do and put out there. And I think if people uh, give it a listen, that, that there's a good chance they're going to like it. I think they will. I'm going to put the link to uh, to buy the album in the description. Have a great day, man. Later, guys. Later. Kyle, thanks so much for having us on. It was great fun. Oh, man, thank you. Yeah, this means the world to me. And I also want to thank all of you out there. If you are new to the channel, you happen by, I hope you'll come back. Please subscribe to my regulars out there, and you guys make this happen. And so until the next one, everyone. Please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace.